man. Oh. All right. Well, hey, man, let's read some stuff. Go on and write it. <laughs> uh, so let's see if uh, if Max well, keeps us in line about whose turn it is each time. Uh, hold uh, on, wrong button. There we I, go. I think the phone's starting to get hot. I'm starting to hear it do some funky stuff. Well, I just can't wait for you got you all set up with the uh, with a mic and a, a ring light. Anyway, uh, let's start with ten. Hey. Matt, you go ahead and start us off. I I put Mike Evans at the bottom of my top. Makes sense. I got you. Um, I did Allen Robinson. I, Chad, I, do you I, remember your list? <laughs> I I don't have it in front of me right now. Who did I have at number ten? Chad had Juju Smith Schuster. Did you? All, all three different tens, but all three solid. I Allen Robinson is probably one of the quietest. You know, him and Mike Evans are pretty similar. Mike Evans being with Tom Brady probably gets a little more attention, but they don't complain and they just put up yards. Yeah. No, my, Mike Evans uh, this past season just broke a record for most consecutive thousand yard seasons. And he's just quietly consistent. 10. And he's at number 10. Yeah, you put him at number 10. What were you thinking? Any thoughts on your. Oh, go ahead. Well, because Mike Evans gets yards and he'll help like keep drives alive, but he's not. A huge threat. Like you, you can cover him. You can stop him. And no, he I agree. He won't usually, break, he's starting to lose that break the top off the defense speed too because he's been around for a minute. Yeah, Didn't he, he played he, Oklahoma State. That's a good question. Or I don't remember State. where he played. I I didn't that. I don't remember where he played. Was he with the 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 who's that one guy? His name is like Johnny or Manzel. Did he play with him? Yeah, yeah. Texas, yeah, Texas yeah, A&M. Yeah. Texas A&M. Oh, A&M. There you go. There you go. Uh, Chad, any thoughts on your Juju Smith-Schuster? Man, I think he filled some big shoes after Antonio Brown left. Um, I think Antonio Brown was the, the big, huge casting shadow superstar. Yeah. And I think him and Antonio kind of went after each other on a few things on Twitter there for a while. And I believe right after that, Juju was the one that – proceeded to make his career even better while Antonio kept digging his hole deeper. Um, I think Juju Schuster, I think he put his own foot in his mouth whenever they played the Cleveland Browns, though, in the playoffs and said, it's the Browns. Yeah. I don't like that aspect of it, but I think up until then, I feel like he, I think he came a long way. I think he was able to shine. And I, I mean, I don't know. I just felt like he was worthy of number 10. I there felt like the other guys hard. I should have had in there, but well, once he started TikTok dancing on team's logos, that's when things started to kind of go downhill for him. Yep, True. yep. That's what I was gonna say. I think he was too much of a distraction and, and and hurt his team in those ways off the field or you know prior to the game. So, and I guess we'll go to nine. Nine. Number nine for Chad is AJ Brown. Number nine for me is. Mike Evans. Number nine for me is Keenan Allen. Hmm. I got you. No, that's a solid one. Uh, we'll we'll get to him eventually on my list. <laughs> uh, but again, we already talked about Mike Evans. He's quiet. He's consistent. But he, I can put him before a lot of these people. He almost yeah. didn't make my list. But when I looked at some of the other ones, his numbers were too good to leave him off. So yeah. Uh. And then you said you had Keenan Allen, so let's hear about that. Because he's also been super consistent. He's starting to get up there, and now he's got a brand-new quarterback that he has to get the timing with, and he still immediately got the – because he's the veteran. He immediately gelled with uh, Justin Herbert out there, and he still put up a really good season. Mm -hmm. And a lot of receivers, you have to give about a year or so to get used to a new quarterback, especially a rookie. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait. <laughs> so Chad, you had uh, AJ Brown. Yeah, I mean, solid. You know, pretty quiet. Kind of like your your Robinson guy, Allen Robinson guy, but definitely, uh, definitely young and doing. You know, just I just think he's one of the reasons that Tannehill's had that resurgence in his career. 
You know, he has Derrick Henry behind him, which obviously is going to open up, you know, less in the coverage because they're stacking the box. And then A.J. Brown is just, I mean, watching him play, he's he's a solid talent. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. And he's a young hey. uh, This one's me, I guess. I have D.K. Metcalf. Who do you got there, Matt? This is where I put Justin Jefferson. And Chad. This is where you put Justin Jefferson. Hey! Um, DK Metcalf's a beast. He really is. Uh, he's probably a little low on my list just because he isn't. I mean, he is a beast, but he has Tyler Lockett there too, and then uh, he's and got Russell Wilson throwing, throwing the, ball. the ball. So that's probably why he's a little farther down, but solid, solid. Like He's a big, athletic, fast, good receiver, so... How about that rookie you guys have all the way at number eight? Yeah, just if, if if Justin Herbert hadn't come out and lit the league on fire with the Chargers, he'd have been he would have been rookie of the year, no doubt. Yeah, I mean we were talking about it from I don't know when we started doing the show again live. I mean he's been on our radar. Yeah, he's on everyone's radar. He, he's he's I think he's the best receiver in Minnesota. I think he's better than Adam Thielen. Uh-huh. <laughs> you agree with you. I went and bought this button just to do this. <laughs> I know. <it. laughs> like, I don't just have buttons laying around. Uh, Chad, you got anything on Justin Jefferson tearing it up there in Minnesota? Well, I mean, he's got, what, Kirk Cousins throwing to him up there? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. we're not huge fans of Kirk Cousins. Obviously, the coach likes him. Kirk Cousins is a guy that I feel, I think being in the year, he's the one that said, hey, co- you know, COVID or not, I'm ready to play. I mean, he was ready to get out there and go gangster. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, for a rookie to come out and do what he did, pretty impressive. He broke Anquan he Bolden's – it was Anquan Bolden's record, right? Rookie receiving yards. Mm. Pretty big name to beat out. Yeah, it is. Oh, Anquan. Yeah. I Thanks this is transforming into the NFL just nicely, basically. Yeah. All right, well, you got a seven there, Matt. That's where I put DK Metcalf. Nice. <laughs> this is where Chad had Mike Evans. And this is where I had Justin Jefferson. Nice. <laughs> so so we've, we've all talked out. about these before. I mean, it, it, it's close enough uh, that, you know, it's just preference on who they are. I just – the reason I probably – I don't know. Jeff, Justin Jefferson just – he took that Stephon Diggs role, and he took it, and he made it his own. He broke a record. And anytime you break a rookie record, you're going to get a little more credit in my book, I think. Uh, now, he could especially probably be higher on the list. Have, he just has to be more consistent. Well, especially when you don't have a top-tier passer throwing you the ball. Hey, listen, I think you're the one that told me that, uh, that Kirk Cousins is the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. I don't believe I ever told you that. I believe you told me that. Like he's he if not the most accurate, I think he is the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. Oh, like just for last season? No, since he's been in the league. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, you did the crack research. You told me. Uh, I, I can't. Even, <laughs> I think I'm second guessing myself. I mean, maybe if he's throwing just short passes. Oh. I, I forget what it was, but you would give me some stat on Kirk Cousins about how accurate he was. I mean, high six. He's got a career accuracy of sixty-seven percent. That's pretty good, but it's not the best. It is now because is we not. said so. I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure Drew, Drew Brees still has that that uh, that record. Yeah, he's he's solid. So, Mike Evans and DK Metcalf say say what you got to say. You guys feel free to jump in. I think DK is only going to go higher on this list just because he's. Such an athletic freak, he is, yeah. and, and and he doesn't get hurt, so he'll put he'll put in the time to to get all those stats built up. He, I think he's going to be a top three receiver before it's all said and done. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Anything else on Mike Evans we haven't touched on, Chad? No, I think um, maybe it's not him, but I was thinking there was a point where I thought he had uh, a lot of drops and stuff. Um, in it earlier in his career, but I think I don't think earlier in his year, but this year he had a little bit of trouble gelling with uh with Tom for a little yeah. bit. 
I think overall, though, like Matt said, I mean, just the number of years he's consecutively being successful in this NFL. I mean, and the quarterbacks in front of him, you know, in front of Brady, I mean, uh, Patrick, he's, a huge, he's a huge guy, man. I think his hands are like, I think his hands oh, are massive. enormous. And for someone so tattooed, he really is a quiet guy. <laughs> <laughs> This is where Chad has DK Metcalf. He's this a is where I, he's a <laughs> he, he yeah. is. This, this is where I have AJ the, Brown. This is where I have the guy opposite DK Metcalf. That's where I have Tyler Lockett. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I want you to finish on that one. So I'm just going to say on AJ Brown. Like I said earlier, I think he's probably the reason Ryan or uh, uh, Ryan Tannehill's had that resurgence uh, he, with having Derrick Henry and AJ Brown there. He's and he's player. just – I mean, I watched him play, and he scares the bejesus out of me when he <laughs> plays this. So, solid player. Uh, what do you got on DK Metcalf other than that he's just a freak? <laughs> Man, Chadwick. I think that we might be watching – and I know some people are real big on uh, Lamb out of Dallas, but I think here in about two years from now, depending on what Russell Wilson does – I think we might be pushing Metcalf in that top two or three, man. I really believe it. Yep. Yeah. It's definitely possible. And he has the extremely yeah. fast, runs good routes, good hands. He's he's slick, man. I'm, he's he's a stud, man. He's a straight stud. Now I am so surprised that you had two Seattle receivers on your list. So tell me about Tyler Lockett. I believe what he what are you, K State Speedy? Yeah, yep. Tyler Lockett is the perfect partner for DK Metcalf on that offense. DK is more of your in the middle of the field guy because he can he, he can outmuscle people for the ball. But if you want to try to double DK, Tyler will make you pay every time because he can also run routes really well, really drops the ball, and he has that he still has that break the top off the defense speed. Every, almost every time you see Russell throw a deep ball, it's usually to Tyler Lockett. Oh, guys, guys, I got breaking news. Did you actually get an update on him? Drew Brees still hasn't retired. Man. <laughs> you made Chad go away just for that. <laughs> I couldn't help it. There was just an opportunity there. We're halfway through our list. Had to do it. <laughs> couldn't help it. But since Chad got up, uh, I think it's my turn to start this one anyway. So, five. Uh, number five is where I put Michael Thomas. That's where I put Tyreek Hill. Really? Yeah. Because that's where Chad put Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Full disclosure. Michael Thomas didn't make my list. Really? It's because he didn't play last year. He's so, still he's still so he's good. Still really good, but if he's going to miss that kind of time, it kind of puts you down my list. <laughs> no, I, I I I just no I I had to keep him on the list. He's just too good. He was the number one receiver last year. He was. There's no way. There's no way I couldn't have put him on this list. And I, I think that you know, although he was injured. He'll be back just in the same form. He'll be putting up numbers, especially since the breaking news that Drew Brees is not retired yet. So, but, but uh, he, still, he still has time to retire, though. <laughs> so I'll let you two Tyreek Hill boys talk about it. I mean, the man put up 200 receiving yards in a quarter. How many people do that? Tyreek Hill and maybe Calvin Johnson. That's, that's how good Tyreek Hill can be. Obviously, you can't do that every game because eventually people will cover you, but – yeah, I mean, they did in the Super Bowl. His speed alone is what makes him so deadly because that's what kills everybody. But it's so controlled speed. He, he can move himself yeah. around. He can, it's not just he's fast. He's not just the Torrey Smith booking as fast as he can downfield and catch a deep ball. He's cutting and, I mean, he's got acceleration. It's sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt, but there's so much more to him than just the speed, but he has major speed. Yeah, no, he he's, he's a good route runner, but if you need him to just run that go route, he's the best at it. Stupid good, and I, I remember watching the mic'd up when the Bills played him in the AFC Championship, and they just said everybody they cut to just said that guy has 
Like he's on a whole nother level. Yeah. Nobody in that level. And he doesn't drop. You got any more you want? No. You got any more you want to add about your Tyreek? Like I expected Chad to put him a little higher. Guys, he's um, you know, when he first started, they said he's gonna have to learn how to run routes and this and that and so forth, you know, because he was more of a special teams, you know, special talent. And I feel like he's done I think he's 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 exceeded my expectations of what he would be as a wide receiver. He really has. The guy, I mean, typically you wouldn't, you know, the guy that short, but like you said, it's not just speed down the field. Man, he he's got speed laterally. He's sneaky, yeah. he's smooth, man. He he's definitely um you can look at all the different wide receivers and you can put a lot of them in different categories, you know, the big, big tall guys, the big strong guys, you know, you got your slot receivers and so forth. Man, he's he's kind of got that slot receiver, but yet he's he's a deep ball threat, man, even at his size, because he can get that extra few steps out in front of him. So yeah. uh definitely a stud, man. I think um it's good that hopefully all that crap, you know, all the off field shenanigans, hopefully that's done in his career. The only reason he's not higher on my list is because he he doesn't he can't win a lot of contested catches. Because he's so small, I don't think he needs to. But not not if you're going deep down the field. But if I've seen him win some contested catches, he has I mean, that drive, man. He's got the fire. He's got the drive, but he's he's gonna probably lose that battle more than win. I mean, if it's a jump ball, but yeah. I mean, if it's just the balls in that general area, he's got the. I mean, he's gonna go out and get it. He, he he's more dangerous when you have more field to work with, because then he has oh, then he has definitely. more to work. I don't see him drop balls either. No, absolutely yeah. not. Four. Now, Matt, I think this is you, but before you say this, I think I know who you're going to say because I, I think about who's left and the fact that you didn't put Michael Thomas on your list. And if you have who I think you have here, we're going to have some talks. So who okay. do you have here? That's where I put Allen Robinson. Oh, okay. Never mind. We're good. Who'd you think? We're I good. Had? This is. I thought you were going to put Julio in here. I'm like, how could you say Mike uh, that Michael Thomas could make it with yeah. Julio up in there? No. <laughs> All right, we're good. Allen Robinson has sneaky good. Yeah. No, well, I mean, he was he, he's always been good. He just hasn't played on a top tier offense. Yeah, I mean, he played in Jacksonville with uh who is that one guy? <laughs> I can't even remember his name now. Blaine Gabbert. No, not Blaine Gabbert, the other one. The Blake the Gabbert. Yeah, Blake Bortles, the wide receiver turned quarterback. That's right. Yes, Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles, and then he goes and plays with the revolving door that is Trubisky Foles. Yeah. And he still puts up over 1,200 yards and what, six or eight touchdowns? I mm think -hmm. six touchdowns? Yeah. I mean, just solid. Anyway, he's he's extremely talented, and I would love to see him one day get to play on the Well, top he's a free agent. He, he is. He's, he's going to be like that Brandon Cooks where he bounces around and always is really good. Always has good numbers, but always is on a new team next year. If he could come to Buffalo, I think that'd be great. He puts up better numbers than Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks has been solid, though. You can't. I, I almost oh, put him yeah. in my list. But he's not a top 10 receiver. No, that's why he's not on my list. But he, yeah. I thought about him. I consider him because everywhere he's gone, he's put up good numbers. Yeah. Except, I think, in New England, which is weird. Um, this is where Chad had Michael Thomas and where I had Tyreek Hill. So I just thought Tyreek was more, you know, a lot of people think of him as that speed guy, but I thought he was more all around solid receiver. So that's why he went up a little bit higher on my list because he does put up the yards. He is that go-to. And I've yeah. seen him in games whenever things aren't looking good. He's just like, give me the ball. And he's open every play because he is so quick and is so good at what he does. Yep. Uh, anything on Michael Thomas you got, Chad, before we uh, move on to the random number threes we got? We, we talked about it earlier, man. I mean, when you're in a system with guys like Drew Brees thrown to you or Stefan Diggs, you know, they're all really great talents. But what brings these guys to another level is definitely the quarterback throwing them the ball, man. Drew Brees is a Hall of Fame quarterback, one of the best to ever take a snap in the NFL. And I feel like – uh I would like to know where Michael goes from here. Um, I think Patrick, I think you're right. I think he's that talented. He does get himself open. He understands what Drew Brees wants him to do. I just want to see what happens now 
if Drew Brees isn't going to be coming back. Yeah. He's had I'm so many good seasons video here in a row. Nah, he's, he's good. He's maybe a little more arrogant than I care for, but, I mean, he is good at what he does. In some of the best – wide receivers out there. I mean, for the longest time, other than DeAndre Hopkins and guys like that to just go to work and just kick ass. But DeAndre Hopkins is pretty cocky too. Don't just because he doesn't oh, yell at people doesn't mean he's not. <laughs> no, I mean my favorite story about DeAndre Hopkins is whenever Bill Belichick caught him on the field, he's they're mic'd up and then Bill Belichick says, Hey, you're the best receiver in the game. And he goes, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Three I think this is uh, this is Chad, and Chad had Devonte Adams here, and this is where I had Devonte Adams. This is where I had Devonte Adams. We all matched up. I didn't expect <laughs> that. Well, good job. Good for us. So, I mean, eighteen touchdowns. I mean, I know you have Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball, but that guy's just good. Yeah, it's it's because he has probably. Arguably the, the best hands in the game because he does not drop passes, and probably the best route runner. But he doesn't have he doesn't have that breakaway speed. Well, he had to make up for all the other Packers receivers dropping balls. So yeah, you know, averages. Yeah, I, th- <laughs> I think he legitimately had one drop all season. I'm going to say this again, and not taking any credit away from these guys that we have in our top fives, but again, look who's throwing him the ball, man. Mm-hmm. When and you that's going to that's going to be a huge ball, part. You know, you get a good thrown ball at you. I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. I w- I would like to I would like to do a list time of the the top 10 most possible underrated wide receivers which some of these guys might be on that list that, to go way up higher for the, you know, teams Allen like Robinson, teams. Brandon Cooks. Yeah, always changing the offensive schemes. Always got a new offensive coordinator. Always got a new quarterback. Always, you know, I mean, I think it would really open our eyes. Some of these guys just don't ever get the chance, man. I mean, they may not be freaks of nature like Randy Moss or, you know, the old T.O.s or things like that. But, um, I mean, look at Julio Jones, man. We talked about him earlier. I mean, kudos to that guy, man. If this was three years ago. Julio's in this top three. You know, he's had Matt Matt Ryan, which I think Matt Ryan at this point is basically, I think he's iced out. I think he's done for the most part. I know you guys think differently. No, no, I'm in agreement. (laughs) I think we're all in agreement. I think that he still has some talent in there, but after that 28-3 Super Bowl, he has not been the same guy. After From that moment to now, he's not the same quarterback. They had – Three guys on that team, I believe, that were stud receivers. They had Julio Jones, Roddy White, and one, Roddy White was like the three guy, I think. And Roddy, Roddy White, White was number one. Then they then they got Julio Jones, and then Julio Jones was number one, and Roddy White. Uh, I don't know who the third one would be. I mean, they got Calvin Ridley was the number one this year for Atlanta, but I mean, they're I again, it's it's a symbiotic relationship. You the good receiver is made great with a good quarterback, and you know a great quarterback can make a good receiver amazing, or a bad receiver good. It just depends, but you have to have someone. And I mean, Josh Allen made a huge Muhammad, leap. Muhammad Sanu was that third guy on that Falcons team. There you go, yeah. Muhammad Sanu. He was he wasn't amazing, but he was good. He was solid. He was good He's the guy that did the flip him. in Cincinnati, didn't he? He was he was good in Washington too. Yeah, so uh, so he, he's a solid number three. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Yeah, for number three, I mean that's like uh, Kansas City. Uh, they have like a solid number eighteen. Well, <laughs> we we call Kelsey the number one guy as a tie yeah end. him we and Tyreek and then uh, Hardman and Robinson Hardman. and Watkins and Hardman you guys got stuff. some some guys. Most of them pretty speedy too. Uh, no, um, but I honestly though. I think Devontae's the best route runner in football. I would make an argument on that one. I don't know, just just the way he cuts his his, his little jump off the line. Like you can't jam him at the line of scrimmage. You can't play when press it, coverage on him. When it comes to these top three, and I think we all have the same top three, uh, they're all stupendous at what they do. But there's arguments I'll be made. So we'll just go and go to. Yeah.
And at this point, I think it's Matt's turn. I don't remember. That's where I put Stefan Diggs. That's where Chad put Stefan Diggs. That's that not you where put I put Stefan Diggs. 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 No. No. No, that's where I put DeAndre Hopkins. And mm-hmm. I think we all can agree that DeAndre is an extreme talent. He is stupid good at what he does. I mean, the Hail Murray alone shows what he can do. But he puts up good numbers. But like three or two, three, four years ago, something like that, he like fell off the map. He couldn't catch a ball to save his life. He was just lost in the shuffle, didn't have a good year. I don't know. You might be able to look up the stats, see what year it was. But, you know, you don't want to see that. And then with my number one leading in receiving yards and receptions and the what I've seen and what – what happened for the team. I couldn't put DeAndre over him because even then his team didn't make the playoffs, even if he was that good. Do you see some stats there? What do you got on uh, Stefan? Oh, wait. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre never had a bad season. Um, he, I'm not his saying worst, bad, but... He, I mean, his worst year was his rookie year. And then 2016, he was just under 1,000 yards receiving. But other than that, he's been 1,000 yards every season. Then it was 16. Like I said, I, I'm trying to remember what year. They also kind of blur together, but there was one where he just – Drop off the map. He still had 78 catches for 954 yards. <laughs> yeah, but you, do you want to realize – look at who, who got 954 yards this year. Those are guys that don't make our list. If you're going to be the number one receiver in, in football, you're not going to fall off like that. You're not going to be, you know, high twos, low ones, you know. Well, I was – I would say pull up all of your Bills guy, Diggs, all of mm-hmm. him. Pull up his – I mean, I think Hopkins is – I don't know, man. He's a freak too, dude. He's stupid good. I mean, it's not like he's low on my list. He's nothing wrong two. with having a bad – nothing wrong with having – it may not even been a bad – and, and I don't even know who his quarterback. He may have a bad quarterback at the same time, which yeah, just goes to show how much a good quarterback will work for you. But that's why I knocked him down. That and, you know, whenever you lead the league in receptions and receiving yards, you get pretty high on my list. Hey, hey, Patrick, just say it. And when you are a Buffalo Bills, yeah, I listen. I'm a, but I've got I've got other things to go along with it. So I again, it's not like it's a horribly separated one and two. It's not like my one is so far past everything that you know there's no. To, you know, I wasn't trying to decide. DeAndre Hopkins could have been my number one, but again, leaving and receiving yards, leading receptions. Anyway, you guys talk about Stephon Diggs. I mean, love Stephon Diggs. He's never had a bad year. He's had years that are kind of low for him, two to be exact. But he's always reliable, and he was on a fairly inferior offense compared to what Stephon Diggs is working with in Buffalo. Well, I mean, we really don't have a run game. If we had a run game, I think he'd do a lot better. That's what. But if you're in an offense that mostly passes, you better lead the league in catches and receiving yards. <laughs> hey, hey, Chad, if we did, well, I want to say that Josh Allen wasn't my number one quarterback. Uh, he wasn't even my number two quarterback. And if we did a running back top 10, uh, no Bills running back would make it. No. So it's not all about being a fan. I can see how things work out. I can see who's, how people are. Who's your number but if one, it's if it's like this, huh? Who's your number one quarterback? Aaron Rodgers. Patrick Mahomes number two. Yep. Yep. Josh you Allen know, number I three. A little special on Cowherd the other night uh, before I go to bed, and Cowherd brought up a point about there's a lot of people out there right now that's got more vision with Josh Allen. Than Patrick Mahomes, you know, they say how Patrick Mahomes lives on this whole separate planet, you know, and I'm, I'm a huge Mahomes fan. I'm glad Kansas City's got him. But, uh, you know, they talked about his size, his durability. You know, he's actually faster in the 40 than Patrick Mahomes. You know, the ball velocity. There were several different statistics that Cowherd threw out there that, you know, definitely lets you know how good Allen is and why Diggs is where he is on your list today and our list today. Because honestly, when they traded for him, he was known as that troublemaker, prima donna, carries a lot of baggage, of you know. So that's kind of where... And he it, hasn't been that at all in Buffalo. I just well, want to say that. No, he joined the Boy Scouts. And, mm-hmm. he, you know, he's not part of like... 
this scream and crying, but I just wonder how long a player like that has. But he hasn't had anything to scream and cry about either. He led the league in receptions and yards. Yeah. No, he's always been good too. He was he was amazing in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And now he got an upgrade in quarterback production, so his numbers obviously went up. But Josh Allen's numbers went up stupid good with him too. Yeah. Having him has made a huge difference. But when you have uh, John Brown was injured for a lot of the year, but when you got Cole Beasley, Stephon Diggs, and John Brown, Gabriel Davis had a solid, I think, six, almost either almost six or almost 700 yard uh, season for a rookie. Gabriel Davis is going to be solid. So, uh, but Stephon Diggs was that guy for Josh Allen. And that's where he mm-hmm. looked every time he was in trouble. And with that route running and the things he could do to shake a dude, shake and bake, he made a difference. So let's just go to one. DeAndre Hopkins. That's where I had. So you had DeAndre Hopkins. Chad had DeAndre Hopkins. I had Stephon Diggs for the reasons I've talked about. I, he did some amazing things. Lead the league in, restart, uh, in receiving yards and receptions. And that was Josh Allen's outlet. Like anytime he's in trouble, he could find that guy. And the, the routes he could run and the things he can do was amazing. So, I mean, he's in our, our intro for the show. He catches a, a ball. Just a random jump ball against a Raider defender and just takes it down. Anyway, yeah. no. you guys talk about DeAndre, though, because I could talk about Diggs all day. I love that guy. I mean, they're they're pretty even in talent, these two. The only reason I got Hopkins higher on my list is because he's putting up similar numbers to Stephon Diggs on an inferior offense. Compared Probably to the- a better running game, and they got Kyler. Kyler's not that bad. I mean, he's... He is a. I think he made my top ten quarterbacks. I think he was like number six. I, I think his best years, though, if he would have had a Josh Allen, an Aaron Rodgers, or a Patrick Mahomes, or well, he had Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson was my what the last five or six. the last couple of years. He, I mean, I know the last few years, but I'm just saying, he's a, he's in the downslide of his career, man. He is. DeAndre Hopkins. I think so. I think he's going to be – I think he'll be good for a while. I mean – What was his rookie year? Man, I love when Matt does crack research. He's so quick at it too. I think he came in the league in what, 13? Yeah, 13. So his, he's going to year nine, eight? Yeah, that's – I mean, that's for receivers, 10, 11 yes. years. And, ah, he, but still be ranked in the one and two on our list that long into your career. I mean, he's doing good. And Kyler Murray, like I said, he's going to keep finding him. Hey, he's going into year nine. He'll turn he'll turn twenty nine this year. I think he's still got a good two three years. years. He does, I guess what I'm saying is he's not in his prime. He's not in his prime. No. As long as he stays healthy, and Arizona's a good place to stay healthy. I mean, he's got good. He's got a good, real good, productive three years ahead of him. Yeah. Especially because Kyler's only going to get better. But I, I'll tell you this much: next year. At, if we have the same conversation next year, I don't have Hopkins at number one, I doubt. I really don't think so. I think no matter what the Cardinals do, I think um, – I don't know. Maybe maybe he will be, but I think he's – I think he'll still be top five. I think I think Diggs still has a good shot at top two or three. Um, I think Tyreek has a chance to make a move up. But it's tough whenever, you know, your tight end has more receiving yards than you, though. Yeah. Like that does take a little hit on you. Leaving Michael Thomas goes down. Oh, I mean, definitely. But I mean, do we get that update? <laughs> Drew Brees still isn't retired. <laughs> Drew Brees might come back. He's working towards it. Uh, right. What do you guys next week? You want to rate some tight ends? We can rate some tight ends. I, Top ten tight ends. Can I, I don't, do ten? <laughs> I think so. Uh, let's do top ten tight ends next week. I can. I, I'm confident that we're not going to agree on number one already. You you still got killed number one, don't you? Don't say it. That's next week. Don't say it. <laughs> Look, I'm not explaining the whole list, but yeah, I still think Kittle, and that's just for me because the kind of offense I want to run. I think Kittle's a better tight end. Yeah, you like his blocking. I'm still going to go Kelsey. Whenever you got the second like, most receiving yards as a tight end, I like his willingness to block. He wants to hit people. That's what I like. About. Yeah, he loves it. He and watching. All right, save it for next week. Hey guys, that's up. Got I've got rates some stuff.
All right. What do you guys think of that? That's some good rating.